I want to talk to you today about emptying out the negative. It's easy to go through life holding on to things that are weighing us down. Guilt, resentment, doubt, worry. The problem is when we allow these things in, they're taking up space for the good things that should be there. Imagine your life is like a container. You were created to be filled with joy, peace, confidence, creativity. But if you allow worry in, it pushes out the peace. There's not space for both. You can't go above 100%. You have a limited amount of room. If you allow guilt to take up space, that's space that you don't have for the confidence you need. And the reason some people don't enjoy their lives is because their container, their heart is contaminated with so many things. They have 10% worry, stressed out over their job, 12% bitterness, mad at their neighbor, 20% guilt, beating themselves up for past mistakes, 9% jealousy, their coworker is more beautiful. They don't realize 70% of their container is negative. They wonder why they don't have joy, creativity, passion. They only have room for 30% of what they should have. And the scripture says, give no place to the enemy. It's not just talking about forces of darkness. That means give no place to guilt, give no place to worry, give no place to bitterness. It can't come in and automatically take over. You control what's in your container. You control what you think about, what you choose to allow in. And we all have negative emotions, negative feelings. But you have to make the choice. I'm not going to give this jealousy, this bitterness, this anger, valuable space and let it poison my life. I'm going to protect what I allow in me. And every morning when we wake up, we need to empty out anything negative from the day before. Somebody offended you at work. They didn't treat you right. It's easy to let that offense stay. Feels good to carry around a grudge. But you have to be disciplined. Say, no, I am not giving this offense any room. I am not going to let it sour my day. They hurt you once. Don't let them continue to hurt you by holding on to the offense. Being offended is not harming them. It's harming you. It's taking up space you need for the good things that move you toward your destiny. Or you wake up in the morning and thoughts of worry come. How are you going to pay your bills? What if the medical report's not good? You'll never get out of this problem. Don't allow that in. Don't make the mistake of dwelling on it. Just say, no thanks. I know God's in control. He's got me in the palm of his hand. He'll get me to where I'm supposed to be. Take inventory of what you're giving space to. Life is too short to go through it with negative things holding us down. David said in Psalm 103, God fills my life with good things so I stay young and strong. Now I've learned if you'll empty out the negative, if you'll make room, God will fill you with good things. You empty out the worry, God will fill you with peace. You empty out the insecurity, negative things people have said about you, God will fill you with confidence. My question today is, is God trying to fill you with good things, but there's no room? Your container is full of worry, regret, bitterness, jealousy. Why don't you start emptying that out? Somebody did you wrong. You could hold on to that bitterness. Instead, God, I forgive them. I let it go. You didn't just forgive, you made room for God to fill you with good things. That's when he'll give you beauty for ashes, joy for mourning. You're in a tough season. The medical report wasn't good. You should be stressed, worried. Instead, God, I trust you. You said you would restore health back into me. You just made room for God to fill you with healing. You empty out the worry, God will give you peace in the midst of the storm. Perhaps a coworker got the promotion that you worked so hard for. Envy, jealousy will come. I wish that was me. I'm smarter than they are. I don't understand that. Instead of letting that stay, God, I know you're no respecter of persons. You did it for them. I know you can do it for me. The good news is God doesn't run out of favor. He doesn't have a limited supply. If you will empty out the jealousy, then when it's your time to be promoted, God will open doors that no man can shut. If somebody got what you wanted, 
That simply means it wasn't supposed to be yours. If they got the promotion, be happy for them. God has something better for you. If they got the man you wanted to date, let's make it real. If they got the girl you were interested in, don't be upset. God knows what he's doing. If it worked out your way, it would be second best. Bottom line, what has your name on it is not going to go to anyone else. Don't go around bitter with jealousy and self-pity. That will poison your life. Empty it out. God is in control. He's directing your steps. At the right time, what has your name on it will show up. God promises if we will make room, He will not only fill us with good things, but He will keep us young and strong. And the reason some people are not young and strong, and I don't mean just young physically, but young in their spirit, vibrant, passionate about life, is because they're filled with the negative. Worry will make you weak. Living stressed out will make you old, give you wrinkles, take your passion. Being bitter, angry, resentful will shorten your life. Proverbs says a relaxed attitude lengthens life. You can be 80 years old and young at heart. Your spirit never ages. I met a woman in the lobby a while back. It was her 100th birthday. She was standing there dressed impeccably, beautiful, hardly had any wrinkles, full of joy. Her mind was as sharp as can be. I asked her what her secret was so I could tell Victoria. She said, I don't worry. I let things go and I laugh a lot. She's lived by this principle. You know, in a hundred years, she's had trouble. People have hurt her. She's made mistakes. Life has happened. Offenses have come, but she hasn't held on to them. She's kept emptying them out. And like God promised, he's filled her life with good things, kept her young and strong. I don't want to get old, grouchy, grumpy, fall apart. I want to stay young, strong, good looking, full of faith and joy and energy. The way this happens is give no place to the negative. Get in a habit of emptying out the offenses, empty out the worry. You make a mistake, empty out the guilt. You didn't do your best, empty out the regret. Do better next time. Nobody gave you credit, empty out the self-pity. You had a bad break, you don't understand it, empty out the questions. If you'll get good at emptying out the negative, you'll be like this lady, strong, young, vibrant, full of faith, full of joy. Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, they will see God. That word pure in the original language is where we get our word cathartic. It means cleansing, releasing. You have surgery, sometimes the doctor will put in a catheter, same root word. It's a tube that drains out the impurities of the body. You can't get up to use the facility. That catheter automatically takes what's not beneficial, the toxins, the infections, the waste, and flushes them out of the body. The doctor knows there will be contaminants. He's not alarmed that the body has waste, infection, He's only alarmed when it's not being released, when we're holding on to things that should be flushed out. When God says, blessed are the pure in heart, he's saying, you're going to be blessed when you learn how to release the impurities of life. When you get in a habit like this catheter of emptying out things that will infect you. You know what bitterness is to our spirit? It's infection. Guilt is infection. Worry, doubt, self-pity, these things are not unusual. Impurities come, you have to push them out. It's when we hold on to them that it contaminates our spirit and causes us problems. You weren't created to carry around guilt, regret, bitterness, anger, that poisons your life. Well, Joel, I'm bitter because I had a bad break. I'm sour because somebody walked out on me. I say this respectfully, that's simply an impurity. Why don't you release it so it doesn't infect the rest of your life? Don't let a disappointment, a divorce, a layoff, a loss poison your future. 
Well, Joel, I'm worried about my health, worried about my finances, worried about my children. Worry is a part of life. Those thoughts come to us all. The key is to not hold on to them. Recognize they're not beneficial. They're not moving you forward. That's an impurity that wasn't meant to stay. You have to release it. God, I don't see a way, but I know you're still on the throne. I know you're bigger than this problem. I know you're supplying all of my needs. You just released the toxin. Are you holding on to infection, to impurities, angry, jealous, worried, discouraged? Maybe you had a disappointment. Something didn't work out. Imagine there's an angel that has a delivery with your name on it. It says beauty for ashes, new beginning, new opportunities, new friendships. He's en route with one of those good things. The problem is if you're holding on to the old, there's no place for him to deliver it. I wonder how many things are en route right now. The angel is standing by with our joy, our peace, our confidence, our creativity, our spouse, but because there's no room, because we're not releasing the toxins, the anger, the bitterness, the jealousy, the worry, then he can't deliver those good things. Instead of living blessed, excited about our future, we become infected. The good news is you can get rid of that infection. It is not permanent. If you'll start releasing the regret, the worry, the bitterness, the anger, then it's just a matter of time before that angel shows up with your delivery. When you make room, God promises He will fill your life with good things.